Hello everyone, it's Andy's Free Guitar Chart Videos. Welcome to my YouTube subscribers, Facebook group friends, and anyone else who's found this video wants to learn more about guitar uh, through using these colorful charts that I make. And this chart we're looking at today is 267 one minor arpeggio four five subs for minor and major triad arpeggios okay so what does that mean we have the one minor arpeggio okay the first thing we have to learn is the one minor uh the one minor for anything so let's look maybe way up here and see what that means i'm gonna like relearn this with you guys so that we're not going to um, have have any difficulty as we progress and it starts to get a little complicated. So with the one minor, we look at the cages here. We have the C box circle. Start with C, D minor, E minor, an E shaped F, let's say an E shaped fourth, and a G shaped fifth, and an A minor shaped a minor so that would be our basic that would be our basic c box there okay so it'd be c d minor e minor and then f just slide that e minor up to a major okay g mi major for the fifth and a ma a minor shape the sixth okay and we're gonna skip the half diminished because today we're just gonna learn the the majors and the minors we could touch on half diminished if we have time now it's important in guitar we have to look at this too so we've got the one four and the five in C okay so that the one four and five in C is C E shape and G shape. So in the C box, which is this is where your guitar starts. My guitar has a little bit lower register here because I down tuned it, and that's where I keep it. The one four five in the C box is C. It's like a triangle here. It's C E and G. C E and G, right like that. Okay, C, E, and G. Just like that. Now, each one of those major chords has a relative minor to itself. So, on like on the piano, it would be, C would be, and it would have... A minor is its relative. We have F, D minor as its relative, G, and E minor as its relative. In any key that you play in, it's going to have the same thing, right? So if you're in the key of B flat, you're going to have G minor as its relative, E flat's the fourth, C minor is the relative. F is now the fifth. D minor is the relative, the relative sixth of fifth. But we're not in the key of F. We're in the key of B flat. It's almost the same, isn't it? <clears throat> Except for one thing. I forgot the E flat. Because F is the dominant fifth of B flat so the same thing for guitar so we're going to be in the key of C here so we would play our C diatonic scale you could start on C or you can start it from E minor here's the lowest note you have it's just I mean that's what it is Okay, so I think we 
made it up to here. I'm trying not to hit the keys with my fingernails so there'll be that tapping sound. Okay, still got that cut on my finger. <laughs> so, <clears throat> where are we with that? Not that I want to start hitting the pause button for no reason, unless I get stuck. Just woke up, it's like the coldest day of the season, right? A day of, the, of this coldness was like February, uh, about 10 months ago, right? So what we have here, is one four five in little letters so we have a minor we have a minor we have d minor and we have e minor it's almost like their own key you know you can almost do the you know you know if you want to do that kind of thing but a lot of times they'll raise that third on that that e minor we're not going to do that today. So the reason why we're looking at this is because we want to stay in the mode of C. The C shape mode. See, on guitar, it doesn't matter. It's called C. It's called the cage system. C-A-G-E-D. C-A-G-E-D-C. So it's C-A-G-E-D. C-A-G-E-D-C. Okay. But that could be in any key. All right, so it that holds for all keys. So as we know, we have a C shape, and then we go to A. Same chord, different inversion, right? Or different six string inversion, if you want to look at it that way. It's like you got six fingers, but the the top two play the same note, just an octave up. And then from the A shape, you go to the G shape here. I can move the capo up to help me make that G a little bit. Okay, and then the E shape. And the D shape, I can do it down here a little bit easier, an octave down. But it's up here, the D shape. Uh, the D shape C, way up here. Little D shape. That's just part of the D shape. The entire D shape goes like, um, okay, well, it would go from here, it would go. That's the entire, that's the, the uh, diatonic like I played on the keyboard for the tripentatonic D shape. The tripentatonic D shape is interesting. Let's go over to the D box and find out. Okay, here we are at the D shape box. So the tripentatonic D shape is D, G, and A. Okay, and the relative minors of those chords, I'm gonna say chords now, not keys, because we're in whatever key we're in, say we're in the key of C, we're in the D shape, key of C. We're not in the D, we're not in the key of D for the D shape. We're just in the D shape. The relative minors for the three chords in the D shape are easily found. You just take the word caged and you advance that D to its next letter. So the D in caged, because caged goes C, A, G, E. E, D, and then starts at C again. We advance the D to that C for the C minor. In the G in caged, we advance that G to E minor for the fourth. And with the A in caged, we advance that A, C, A to the G minor in caged. So these are the three relative minors of the three majors in the D shape. And one way, an easy way to find, for instance, the A. So if we have an A shape C, which I might play right here. 